Aldi, welcome to episode two of Therian Talks, the Therian Guide podcast that aims to bring you perspectives on therianthropy in a format you can listen to. Today we have with us Dust Wolf, the big, bad, friendly wolf, and myself, Zephyr Nizumi, the big, fluffy, derpy tiger, as the show host. Hey, everybody. <laughs> All right. So today we'll be switching roles, and I'll be interviewing Dust Wolf as we explore another question suggested by a member on the Therian Guide forums. This question was brought to us by, I hope I pronounce it correctly, Razgul? Uh, we'll say Raz. And Raz suggested the topic, I'd love to hear about people's stories of their awakenings. So before we actually dive in, Dusty, what exactly is an awakening? Uh, what does that word mean to you? Well, I've always found it amusing how uh, the modern community calls it kind of like its own thing, like the awakening, you know, like the quickening where the highlighter chops somebody's head off if everyone anybody is old, old enough to remember that uh that dramatic event uh, in that uh, particular movie um I, I just you know it's it's just it's really just um the time when you first learn that you're a therian uh and it's it's nothing dramatic about it so it's a, it's a strange way how uh, people invented this word for it um I think for a lot of us, uh, that the time that we le first learned of our terrain entropy is special to us because um, uh, we it was the first time that we really found out that uh, what we felt about terrain entropy was like real and it wasn't just uh, we s stopped trying to fit it into some kind of uh, human concept um, and instead it becomes its own thing. Uh, and the secondly, it was the first time that we met other people who are like us. Right. Uh, so. I think this is like, uh, it was a very exciting time for a lot of people. And so this is why this word awakening became bound to it. Um, uh, th there's uh, quite a few threads on the uh, Terrain Guide um, uh, forums about uh, uh, different people's awakenings. Um, and I would just like to point out one uh, public thread that is in the introduction to Terrain Entropy Forum, um, a journey of discovery by Kate Sepp. Um, basically, um, I really like this thread because it uh, really demonstrates uh, what an awakening is from the perspective of a science-minded person like myself, for example. Um, I also agree that awakening is a, it's a very mystical term. Um, in my own story, um, I'm not going to get into it in detail right now, but it's almost like, for me personally, there were various stages of acceptance. Um, for me, uh, in the very beginning, as a child, I, I felt feline. So um, was there a real awakening there? But there were several points in my life that kind of made me realize that, hey, you know, this, um, it's almost like my understanding of it became more developed. So um, I'm kind of interested as to whether or not awakening really describes the process, because sometimes for some people it may be a one-time event, and for others it may have, uh, like in my story, it might have layers. Um, so for now, uh, I guess, uh, when did you have your awakening? Uh, actually, this was a long time ago. It was, I think it was about the year 2000 or something like that. Um, I'm not really sure anymore. I checked my records and the oldest records that I have in, are in the year 2002, but I can already see from the correspondences there that the friends that I met who were Terrians already knew me at the time very well. So it, must have been a few years before. Um, so uh, judging uh, by <laughs> if I did the math correctly, that was over 15 years ago. So it's quite a while. Right, right. And uh, again, for me, it was, uh, I remember being five or six when I started really thinking, uh, really feeling that it was a part of me. But um, again, I didn't have access to any kind of community for a very long time. So as far as uh, when exactly I had words to go with it or again understood that it was something that other people experienced it wasn't until far far later i think 2005 was when i finally started to find words uh, and other people to um who experienced the same kind of uh things that i did in that regard uh so okay for you how did you find out about very it was actually an interesting story uh uh, a lot of people are familiar with this uh, alt horror uh, werewolves uh, usenet group, um, but uh, usenet is a very old concept, so uh, it's it's like a group email kind of thing that existed back then. 
um, I actually quite sure that I spoke about my awakening before in the TG forums, but um, so um, even before I learned about what the reentropy even is, I had this feeling that um, the form, my body or my hands um, were uh, did appear the way that it should. It was very a, a very w vague feeling, so um, I I. I couldn't quite explore it, and the only way I could uh, is, um, but um, by making these uh, photo manipulations, I would, I would take a picture of a human and a picture of an animal, and then there would be programs that allowed you to kind of morph and blend these two images together. Right, uh, right. So that's why I used uh, to explore this. Uh, for for this exploration, I I needed these pictures, and uh, <laughs> this is one of the funny things because this was 15 years ago. Uh, at the time, the internet didn't really contain a whole lot of pictures. Uh, it's, but some people might find this rather hard to believe. Um, but the thing is that if you had an image, uh, you would actually have to like uh, scan a photograph or something like that. And it just wasn't common for people to do that. You know, These days you have phones and you can just click something and uh, it, the picture comes on the internet. But back then it was it was not that common at all. So uh, finding these pictures, you know, it, you had to like go to a website of a zoo or something and uh, they would have a picture of a wolf or something. Um, so I, I mostly searched uh, the things that came to mind at the time were like uh, pictures of apes and bears and stuff like that. And then one day I figured like, why don't I try to search for um, uh, for wolves? Um, and uh, this was this was actually a really exotic choice for me because, um, like you know, today everybody says, okay, everybody's a wolf. You know, that's the default choice. But at the time, for me, it was wasn't really. Um, I mean, choosing a wolf of, of all things, you know, because they're like this uh, frail forest animal that nobody knows that they exist, um, and um, for me, just uh, I just randomly choose this. Um, some people say that, like um, you know, maybe they had dogs when they were kids. Um, when when I was a kid, I I had this uh, instinctive reaction to loud noises, which made me um, want to um, hide whenever I heard a loud noise, like a vacuum cleaner or something like that. Right. Um, and um, uh, um, so it was very impractical for me to be around dogs because dogs like to bark loudly and this would just make me scramble, you know? Right. So, um, so what I, uh, I mean, relatives always had cats and stuff like that. And I never hung out with dogs and this was a completely arbitrary choice for me. Um, but then when I started looking for these pictures, I found this website, uh, called the Alt horror werewolves, uh, FAQ. And um, this website had this <laughs> weird idea to call of these people they they called wares, um, and <laughs> it was filled with very stupid things that you would never find on a modern terry entropy website. That it had this uh, list of werewolf jokes, like um, how to tell if your roommate is a werewolf, like uh, if you have no water in the toilet every morning and you don't have a dog. <laughs> so it, it was filled with ridiculous, stupid things. Um, but um, when I saw it, I immediately felt like this was something important. That this uh, this group of people was something. Um, uh, I, I re it immediately clicked. You know, it's um, we use this term a lot on the on the on the TG website. Um, that it just clicks, and it's hard to explain what it really is. But when you see it, you just kind of know. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so um, I just sat there and uh, went through the night to read this document before me um, and keep in mind that I was like 15 at the time and uh, this was a shared family computer and I wasn't even supposed to be awake at that hour. So uh, it was, this was um, really an unusual event for me. But um, I read through this website and then I found it's associated with this Usenet group. And then I started reading uh, the posts in the group uh, and I found that, um, you know, there are like other people who also experienced this and we started talking and through conversations with them, I kind of discovered my theory entropy. Right. That's, that's interesting. I appreciate you uh, having the patience uh, with the internet back then, because I remember uh, 
AOL on dial up. It would take minutes to, to even get onto the internet in the beginning. So uh, I feel some of the pain with that. Um, so you mentioned that you had Darian friends. Uh, how did you meet them? What was that like? Uh, well, um, you know, one thing, when I first joined this Ultra Werewolves group, I think it was kind of already on its way out. I mean, it, it was no longer so popular. Um, and um, there were only a few very cranky pe old people on it. Uh, and if you're trolls and spammers and stuff like that, you have to understand that Usenet groups are not moderated in any way. So everything, you know. Right. Um, and um, um, uh, so amongst this group of people were also some people who are my age who were just discovering it through entropy. So um, they were also wolves, you know, and we just kind of met there and um, we were instantly compatible, you know. Uh, we became friends almost immediately and after we were friends, we kind of felt like we'd known each other for years, even though right. we just known each other for like a few weeks. Um, I called this my back, which is um, kind of funny because I remember the the older people who were in this group be, being very irritated with this concept. Right, right. Um, <laughs> uh, so, um, and and this is actually one of those funny things about the community today because now I am here on the other end and I am irritated with all these other people who also call it a pack. But it was different, you know, back then. Like. Um, it didn't feel like it was this artificial thing that it is today. Um, it was like, um, um, you know, the people who were like in my back, so to speak, um, they were like, they were really like family, you know, they were like all the people on TG right now. We just, um, uh, we, um, if we could, we would be together, you know, it's, um, I, I mean, I gave these people money and stuff like that. It, it wasn't just strangers on the internet. Right. So, um, it's, I think it's one of those things that, you know, I would bring back if I could, um, for it to be like, um, okay for people to hang out in groups like that, because today we're really like resistant to this because we say, okay, we don't form packs on TG, you know, it's forbidden <laughs> or something like that. And it's just not right, you know, because if, um, I think everybody has the right to experience what I experienced back then. So I, I just think, you know, maybe maybe the reason this has changed is because now there are um, also other people. I mean, uh, so many other fewer types that are not wolves, and maybe other people don't understand uh, what that bond really is like. You know. Right, and uh, as a as a tiger, I kind of find it interesting that I still kind of I seem to be absorbed into the pack too. So uh, you know, I've got to. I kind of need to do some digging and figure out what that's about. But um, as far as uh, how it feels like a family, uh, would you say that's almost like the same kind of click that you felt when you um, when you were well when you found your stereotype? You said that you felt a kind of click. So did you have the same kind of click with the fellow wolves that you found? Yeah, m maybe it was a little bit naive, you know, because um, I just kind of assumed that they they when they understood things as I did. But um, yeah, we, we were we were like um, we kind of instantly understood each other. Like um, for example, um, that there were two be two people that I met at first uh, when I joined this group. Uh, it was Robert uh, from Spain and Christina from the USA. And we had like correspondence, you know, I would write emails every day to Robert and he would write back and uh, it would be kind of exciting, you know, because um, I, I guess today when you have instant chat, it doesn't seem so remarkable, but it was really like a contact with another person, you know. Uh, and uh, I remember that when I talked to Christina, she would like uh, give me these fantastical stories about P shifting and I would be like, um, I, I didn't believe it, you know, on the, one, on the one hand, but at the same time, I was like, okay, you know, I accept you because you're like a fellow Terry and you probably know what you're talking about. Right. It was, it was like really cringy, you know. Um, and she made this wolf necklace uh, for me and Robert and uh, she mailed it to us and I wore it every day. Like, um, I, I hid it, of course, because I didn't want to show other people that I'm a Terrian, but um, right. I, I wore this, you know. Um, and I guess this is the same way it is, as it is with people today. Like, um, everybody who's a Terrian kind of 
probably goes through a similar phase and they do all the, the similar things and like i just uh, it feels cringy today because you know i've done everything of that and <laughs> when other people repeat it it's just it's just silly you know it is interesting because uh, i know discussions with uh, a few other therians who uh try to figure things out uh before the internet really had this big boom a lot of us still did kind of uh, tried to do a lot of different things to make this make sense. Um, I know um, P shifting too. When I was a, an early teen, I kind of hoped that it was something that would be possible to accomplish. Um, it, it you know tried many many things and never worked out. So um, it's it's kind of fortunate that nowadays the, the internet has boomed because you have a lot of resources available to help um, to help kind of steer you in the right direction. You, know, you don't spend that time and energy on something. Um, you, you find something more meaningful from it instead of uh, just kind of pursuing something that, that doesn't really help you in the end. Um, so you, you mentioned a few friends. Uh, what happened to them after that? Um, well, it's been a long time, but you know, uh, after a while we kind of grew apart and um, it's one thing I kind of regret, and um, it's it's one of the reasons uh, that I wrote that thread um, on the Terrian guide about uh, longevity. Um, and basically, um, uh, at some point, I already felt like I lived a full life because I knew them, and we had all this experience together, and then we just grew apart. And um, for example, um, Robert, over the years, uh, I think it was like you know ten years later, um, he uh, found out that uh, he was actually gay and um this was um um more important to him than being a Terrian and um you know uh, maybe he was just uh, the experiences he was having were not because of Terrian entropy but because he was gay right. and um this kind of you know i don't have something against gay people but it really hurt me because i thought he understood how i felt you know right. i thought he was like a Terrian he understood these feelings that we were talking about but uh, maybe it was just, you know, uh, we were talking, uh, we were using the same words, but we were talking about two different things, you know? Right. Um, um, we also like met in person and uh, it was this same sentiment, you know, yes, it was such a shame, you know, because I, I, I thought he really knew it all. Um, and then <laughs> Christina, that was actually a funny story. Um, it turns out that she only like spent time with me uh, because she was like into Robert and Robert preferred talking to me over talking to her. Um, and this was actually a, a pattern that re repeated itself with uh, her next partner, Ryan, who was like an American, lived on the other side of the world, but it was the same thing, you know? Um, and I imagine this is really weird for people, but this is actually um, the way wolves um, think, and it's very stereotypical. Um, and the case was that um, Ryan and me and Christina were all friends. Um, but um, uh, I, I spent a lot of time with Ryan because um, um, I know he was like um, unemployed a few times and uh, he had like problems in life and there were times when I helped him out right. um, and he, he viewed me as a, as a leader because of that and because of that he felt he could be with, with Christina, you know, and, and uh, <laughs> this is like uh, just an example of how wolf emotions really like tie into your life, you know. Um, because, you know, they could easily have been together because I was on the other side of the world, you know, but right, right. <laughs> still, you know. Um, but yeah, the, the last I heard of Christina, the, she was okay. She had a house. Um, uh, she got a pet dog and she named him Dusty after me. I oh. wasn't sure how to feel about that. Um, uh, and uh, but she was like um, her uh, her mom died at some point and she was like without internet for like five years and and after we got on, got got in touch again it just there was no relationship to talk about you know so we just um, we lost touch right so what other uh, what about your theory anthropy experiences around the time of your awakening what kind of things did you experience when you started when this click happened and you started to feel like hey this is me. Um, yeah, that's one of those interesting things. Like, um, I didn't really have, um, you know, um, these uh, fancy train tropic experiences before. Um, uh, I, uh, after, you know, until after I learned about the entropy, I, like my first dream shifts were only after uh, meeting Christina and Robert. 
um, and uh, like um, Christina claimed to be an Arctic Blustarian, and uh, in this dream she there was like uh, an encounter with um, uh, such a wolf in a uh, dust desert, okay. and this is actually the story about where the name dust wolf comes from. Um, uh, and um, I don't know, um, at the time uh, on this Usenet group, there wasn't really such emphasis on actually understanding Turiotropy. We just kind of um, realized that we had this thing in common and we spent time together and that was all. And it wasn't until um, much later uh, when I joined the wear list, um, when uh, we visiting websites instead of Usenet groups became a thing. Um, and uh, that I started like uh, questioning am I a Quintarian because there were all these terms and right. uh, there was like a wiki containing Terrian terms and so forth. Um, it wasn't until then that I started to try to fit my experiences into these different labels that existed. Um, okay, so uh, what, what label did you describe yourself as back then? I think it's, it's more important to actually think of yourself I mean, uh, to think about the experiences you have uh, rather than to try to fit yourself into labels because um, I have had these experiences long before I ever started like classifying them into different things. And um, I'm not sure if what I experienced uh, was uh, contrary entropy, what it was supposed to be when it was defined by, you know, Lion Templin in the 97, you know, right. um, like, um, I don't know if this was the same thing, but it was something, you know, it, um, everybody knows, I mean, can tell from um, my posts probably that um, my experience with the entropy is very integrated. Like I don't get uh, phantom shifts and uh, mental shifts or anything like that. I just, um, I just sort of act like a wolf and often without it realizing it. Right. Um, so um, when uh, my awakening, um, not so brought up these experiences, but actually just taught me how to um, understand them, how to process them rationally. Right. Um, and um, I, I think even that the awakening was, was maybe more important because um, it allowed me to start socializing with other people who were like me uh, than it was um, um, uh, for, you know, learning about the re-entropy because um, my wolf nature sometimes got in the way with um, having like proper interactions with uh, with with uh, non terrians um, Like um, there was uh, a time like when I was like uh, a kid and um, uh, in primary school, and um, uh, there was there was like um, uh, there was a, a friend, and I, I really I cared about that friend, you know. I um, and um, I just uh, uh, did what was completely natural to me, I tried to do like this uh, playful dominance thing, you know, that wolf pups sometimes do in play. Uh, and I just grabbed him by the neck and tried to pin him down. Uh, and uh, uh, this was really like playful to me, you know, but the teacher saw this as bullying and I was reprimanded in front of the entire class because I did it. So I just think like normal wolf interactions are not normal human interactions and you can't have that you really need other Terrian friends in order to be able to like express yourself. Right. Uh, and I needed that aspect. I mean, wolves are social animals and we really need that. Right. And I guess to kind of go back to what you were saying too, um, a lot of my experience uh, I had to do individually. Um, I, I didn't have access to a website. I didn't know any of these terms or any of these words or anything. Um, I think you're very correct in that um, the, the labels can sometimes help to describe what we've experienced, but it's important to not try to do it the other way around. Um, it can be somewhat damaging to say, um, or to almost live up to the expectations of, okay, well, this label of Contherian or Suntherian exists, so um, I need to fit all of this 100% or else I'm not a real Therian. Um, I know sometimes it seems like people try a little too hard to, to fit into those labels and they don't understand that it's more about trying to trying to describe what they personally went through um, instead of trying to to fit a specific description that may not be for them anyway. Um, all right, so if anything, uh, what would you recommend to Therians who are just now going through an awakening? Someone who's listening to this 
right now who's uh, maybe trying to figure out what they are, um, where they fit into things. So what kind of advice do you have? Oh, I would say most importantly, just, you know, be yourself and just let this, let it happen. Because like um, when you get into an awakening, you get, um, it's natural to try and do some things and try to explore your theory entropy and so forth. And you just, just got to let it happen. Um, it's not like um, you could do something wrong, you know. Um, it's, um, I remember when I went into this, I felt uh, it was very exciting. It was very energetic, and um, um, it's definitely something that like could affect your grades and so forth. But right. it's okay, you know, because discovering who you are is an important part of your life. Um, and if it turns out that you're not what someone else imagined, then you know it's okay. You know, I think it's important to not be too critical of yourself if you're going through an awakening too. Um, again, I just mentioned that when I was going through all of um, my self-discovery, um, I, I think I mentioned on the last podcast, I, I actually thought I was crazy. I didn't think that anyone else um, experienced what I did. I, I mean, I, I identified much more as a feline than as a human. And like you mentioned in your own discussion, um, interacting with humans was sometimes a very complicated process for me. All the other kids in the schoolyard, it was very easy for them to integrate into social groups. And it's like they understood how and to use the word human packs, how those worked, um, it wasn't as easy for me. It felt kind of foreign to me. Um, and then growing up in, into teenage years, again, I, I kind of ostracized myself because I wasn't, um, I didn't feel like I fit in and I felt like something was wrong. Um, so it's kind of important to, when you're going through this awakening process, to understand that um, you're not alone and you're not crazy. <laughs> so, um, it's it's important to give yourself time to uh, you know be resourceful, uh, listen to the stories of others, and you know like you said just not too long ago, if you find out that you're not Darian, if you find out that you're not this, if you find out that you're not that, it's okay. Learn from what you uh, learn from your mistakes, learn from your experiences. Um, it, it can be a slow process sometimes. It can be a quick one other times. Uh, some people. In a very quick period, they find out what their stereotype is, uh, very specific uh, species and everything else. Others, it takes it takes quite a lot of time and effort to do that. Um, so, again, even like we mentioned about not, not trying so hard to fit in with a specific label, don't feel like the awakening process is anything magical or so described that if you're not doing it the way others do, it's wrong. Um, just kind of feel it out. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes it may have a lot more to do with what your stereotype is than you give it credit for. Uh, maybe you try to human it a little bit. So um, maybe try to feel it out and see, you know, what does it feel like I should be doing? Um, and just kind of go with it from there. Yeah, I think nowadays with all the, um, you know, um, uh, all the grilling and everything that you get when you start to try to, you know, visit new community. I think this is like a step in the wrong direction because really, um, I have to be honest, you know, my experiences with uh, learning about my Terry entropy were very extremely cheesy and um, uh, predictable and uh, uh, following patterns that would be inviting to, you know, um, uh, for people to like be very nasty at me. But, right. you know, it's just those experiences. I, I just, um, um, there was no other way other than to just try to explore them, you know. Um, and I think that's okay. Um, and we need to kind of find, find a way to bring that back into the community today. I don't know. I, I'm actually um, someone who's guilty of this too. I, there are times even now I'm, I'm reluctant to speak about my experiences um, because one of the first times that I tried coming into the theory community was back in 2005, I think 2006. And I experienced that grilling too. Um, I was just trying to figure out what was going on and, and finally come to terms with it. And some members who were much more, they had like more substance in the community. They had more presence. Um, it's almost like they jumped on me. <laughs> and like uh, they expected me to have immediate answers for everything. Well, sometimes it, that, that actually discouraged me from even trying to participate. And I think it's, um, I, I think grilling in a sense is okay 
if it gets you thinking. But if you're challenging someone and trying to disprove them altogether, I think that's where it's a little more um, problematic. Uh, you know, we if someone's going through the awakening process, they probably need a lot of support. Um, I know when I was going through it, I couldn't talk to my family about it. I couldn't talk to my friends about it. Um, to give one of my kind of funny stories away, um, I was in middle school when I experienced my first um, phantom shift, at least the first one that I really remember. Um, I was in gym class and I was getting changed and all of a sudden I felt like I was supposed to have a three foot long tail. And I kind of like this weird feeling came over me and I actually looked around the room to see if anyone else had noticed what was going on. Like if someone saw a tail that wasn't there and I'm like, something's a little different here. Um, something's a little weird, but I, I didn't talk to anyone about it because it's, you know, how do you really talk to your friends or your teachers about something like that without sounding like you're crazy? Um, but again, when you get into the community, you see that things like these phantom shifts, they are, they're, um, they're somewhat common. Um, not everyone has them. Uh, like you said, in your case, uh, I believe you said you don't have any. Um, but in my case, I do. Like, uh, I don't know if the phantom shifts are always there, but it seems like they kind of come to the forefront sometimes. Um, but again, that was another part of the process. Like at some points in my life, I tried to kind of suppress the feline thing, and then something like that would happen and kind of bring it back out. So. Um, it's almost like I went through various phases of awakening. I would accept myself to a degree and then I'd kind of push it away. And then a few years later, something would happen and it would come back out again. Um, I mean, I've been feline the whole time, but it it's almost like my awakening had multiple layers to it. And um, I think that's, use that maybe as a story to show again, if your awakening is not a simple process, that's fine. But um, I still encourage you to kind of, Take your time and use your resources again to to try to suss things out. Um, don't feel like you've got to figure everything out within a day. Um, some of us, you know, we've been dealing with this for decades and we're still learning about ourselves. Um, it's okay to take your time. And it's not, you know, there's no reason to rush to any conclusions. Um, and I think one thing that's also... Um, perhaps uh, today's community is not very good at um, is that um, it's actually possible to also not be a Terrian. And uh, we also kind of need to accept that um, that possibility. Um, and um, this uh, time when you be when you are first get in touch with the re-entropy and try to learn about what it is, uh, is also the opportunity to see if maybe you are not a Terrian, maybe, maybe there is an easier explanation. Um, for um, your experiences, because it is entirely possible for someone uh, to uh, encounter Terry entropy, but not be a Terrian. <laughs> I mean, um, there are a lot more people in the world who are not Terrians than people who are Terrians. Right. Completely normal. Um, so it's just, I, I'm not saying that you should question yourself, like, you know, um, actually, to be honest, you know, actually, um, I am a very skeptical person. This is one of the reasons why I mentioned that. Um, uh, post at the beginning um, because it is written from the perspective of a skeptical person. I am very skeptical and I was I was having a very hard time accepting that their entropy is real. Um, and um, I, I think this self-criticism is also healthy, but you know, um, it's, it's important to be self-critical enough to be able to decide this kind of thing. Um, so, um, um, on the one hand, um, uh, you know, because why? Because there are actually um, uh, explanations for uh, experiences you have that um, are um, that might, it might be useful for you to know um, about them. Like, for example, there is autism and there is stuff like that. Um, not everything is the entropy, you know. Um, some things are like um, conditions that. <laughs> You know, you can maybe even get medication for it. It's just, uh, it just it's important to consider everything. And this time during your awakening is um, is the time uh, to ask yourself about these things. And it's really kind of about being fair to yourself. Again, um, the the more effort you put into really understanding what's going on, the better off you're going to be in the long run. If you jump to conclusions and you automatically assume, yes, I'm a tiger darian, 
um, it, it, later on down the line, um, that could cause you some conflict. You could uh, fall into a pattern of trying to either prove or disprove yourself, and it could cause a lot of grief and anxiety. Um, a few of the other things to mention, too. So, um, again, it, not everyone that's on Therian Guide is a Therian, and that's perfectly fine. Um, we also find that uh, sometimes people are, are purely kith, um, and that's something we're trying to we're, uh, we'll discuss in a few more minutes um, regarding something that's going on with that. But um, you know, sometimes people are just drawn to a specific type of animal. Um, there are various reasons behind that. Um, I think sometimes too, uh, more often than not, if people uh, kind of involve themselves with a specific species for a long time. Um, let, let's say you're, you're wondering what your stereotype is and you begin looking into wolves. Well, if you spend a lot of time uh, watching wolf documentaries and reading wolf books and things like this too, I think personally you might, you're going to be inclined to almost starting to identify with it, even if you're not actually a wolf. Um, so in that sense, it's, uh, I think it's, Again, take your time. Don't rush into things. Um, try not to be too consumed with it either. Um, I think if it's a part of you, it's going to kind of show itself. Um, you don't need to surround yourself. I, I mean, I didn't have any, there were no tigers anywhere near where I lived. I didn't have any any um, tiger books. There were no tiger shows on. Uh, yeah, there was Tony the Tiger. He's great. But, um, you know, I didn't... Uh, I didn't immerse myself with tigers, and still, eventually, it came out. You know, it's, it, it made itself known. Um, I think I've seen some people who they try really hard, like they're really interested in wolves, and they want to be a wolf fairy, and, and then they go through this period of just of being completely absorbed in in uh, research and things like that. They identify as a, a therian and a wolf for a while, and then they're like, "It was not really me." Um, so I think. It's again. It's um, a time of being cautious and being honest with yourself. Um, there's nothing to prove to anyone other than yourself. Um, even though you shouldn't be proving it to yourself, it's about honesty with yourself. I know I've seen people um, experience cameo shifts. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are that creature. Um, sometimes, uh, if someone spends a lot of time around birds, they may feel like they have um, wings, or they may feel like they are. A bird even if they're not um so it's almost like a, a, a drive-by theory anthropy thing that goes away um so again there, there's a lot that can go along with this um so i think if anything uh what we what we recommend is for people to kind of you know just keep track of what your thoughts are what you're learning about yourself um and kind of go go with the flow um like one thing that you may have noticed about the way I explained my own awakening was that I didn't really spend a whole lot of time researching wolves and so forth. I mean, I did look into it because, um, you know, like um, I had a dream shift and I experienced like uh, a certain element of wolf behavior that I didn't know anything about. And then I went and looked it up um, and I found um, what wolves do in that situation. and. Um, um, it explained a few things to me, you know, but uh, the point wasn't that I was trying to find something in wolves uh, to match my behavior to. No, I was just trying to explain my own feelings, you know. Right. Um, and I think this is like the most important takeaway. Just um, um, your awakening is about you. It's about the way you feel um, and about finding explanations for how you feel. Um, and that is just what it's for. I agree. So before we go, we'd like to discuss some of the projects TG members are working on. Um, the first one is going to be the 2018 yearbook. So make sure to check out the TG yearbook sub forum. It's uh, on the Ethereum Guide forum under Creativity and Games. Uh, we're looking for submissions for quite a few things. Uh, there are photo contests, creative arts. Uh, we also want to know kind words, like if someone helped you out this year, you'd like to, to thank them in a special kind of way. Uh, what other insights have you gained? Um, you know, what kind of things have you experienced in 2018 that you would like to help everyone remember? Um, so yeah, like last year, um, I don't. I mean, if you haven't been around, that's no problem. But um, the yearbook is like created out of your contributions. It's um, that's the kind of the point of the yearbook. It's um, uh, it's it's here to uh, help us remember uh, 
what PG was like in uh, this year, you know, uh, 2018. Um, so um, you are very much encouraged to come leave your mark. Um, and uh, there will be like a series of threads where you can uh, reply. And these replies will end up in the yearbook. Um, and at this opportunity, I would also like really uh, to give a big thank you to uh, Ping Dolphin and Hattie for uh, their help in uh, the yearbook design team. Um, if anyone else wants to join the design team, they are free to do so. Um, and um, it's just like really for Ping Dolphin because this project would never take off without her help. So um, thanks much. We appreciate it, you two. Keep at it. <laughs> All right. Um, another project that we have going on is uh, the Great Kith Project, and it is led by Renata. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong. I, I asked Renata how to say it, and I probably still did it wrong. Uh, additional information on that project can be located in the, the KISS forum, and it's under the general board on the main site. Um, if you have time and feel that you are KISS or you're interested in expand our understanding of it, um, give the thread a look and leave some comments. Um, again, we're, I mentioned earlier, um, KISS, you know, we're trying to see if it's just a connection with animals or if it's something deeper. So uh, this is going to be um, a project that Renata would like to have some participants for possibly interviews. Um, if anyone has any kind of resources that they could use to help out with understanding um, the impact of what Kith is, uh, again, feel free to look up the, the Great Kith Project, and I'm sure any help would be appreciated. Um, of course, we would also like to have additional topics for these interviews. Um, if you haven't done so yet, check out the thread uh, it's called Interviews, What Kind of Things Should We Discuss? It's located in the Therian polling area of our forums under the Therian three board. And submit some ideas for future topics. Uh, it'll take us some time to get through these, but uh, we appreciate any kind of feedback. And we want to make sure that your ideas keep coming in. Thank you for ev to everybody for listening. Um, and uh, we'll see you around uh, in the next episode. All right. Take care.